Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com, and I have 16 tips, it's not 16, but 16 tips to help you get better fireworks images, and these are in no particular order, so let's get to the list. Have a tripod. You need a tripod when it comes to shooting fireworks. You need a stable platform to capture these images because as we're gonna find out with exposure later, you need to shoot at slower shutter speeds, which means you can't handhold or you can, but the results may be a little bit shaky. So a very stable tripod or a moderately stable tripod is a good recommendation to have. Also, you don't wanna put the tripod so close to the ground just in case somebody stands in front of you because a lot of times people are either standing or around and they could walk in front of your camera and you don't want that happening when you are shooting fireworks. Get to your location early, find your spot and own it. Yes, I want you to own it. I want you to put your name on it, take some chalk, write it down on the ground or spray paint it onto the grass, but that is your spot for the night. The reason you want to get there early is because you know it's going to be busy and you know there's going to be a lot of people there. So you want to find the location that is going to be best for shooting the fireworks that you have. A recommendation for how you can own your spot, well you could bring somebody else with you to spread out, or you could bring a blanket if you're allowed to put it down that owns your square. That is your square, you own it, you protect it because you don't want somebody eight feet tall blocking your view standing in front of you. What lens should I use? Well, I liked using the 24 to 70 on the wider side on an FX body, and if I was to shoot with a DX body, I would probably shoot something like a 17 to 50 millimeter lens. Now, the reason I do that is because I think ultra wide angle lenses, unless you're really close to what you're shooting or you're going for a specific scene, probably won't show the fireworks as well as you could capture them. And I definitely don't recommend a fisheye lens uh, unless you really want to take one fisheye picture. I'll allow you to shoot one fisheye picture if you really want, but generally speaking, somewhere in the range of 24 millimeters to 40 some millimeters, depending on what you're shooting, will benefit you the most. So it all depends on the situation. So each situation is going to be different. So try it out, see what works for you, but don't be afraid to switch lenses from wide to a little bit tighter when shooting your fireworks. Should I shoot horizontally or vertically? Well, it's personal preference. For those shots that you wanna get the whole trajectory, yes, that's right, the trajectory of the mortar before it explodes, well, then you wanna to try to go vertical to show the whole thing and to get the explosion and to get the lights going that you can track it. But I sometimes like going with the horizontal when I'm shooting up in the sky where I just wanna get the explosion because I feel that the horizontal works much better for shooting. So try them both, vertical, horizontal, you decide what works best for you. Where should my ISO be? Should it be really high because we're outside in the pitch black or ultra darkness? No, I like to keep it around 100 or 200, depending on what your camera can do. The lower it is, the better you're going to be. You have to remember that fireworks are really bright, so there's no need to up your ISO to try to compensate for that because the fireworks are very, very bright. What should my aperture be? Well, I like to shoot somewhere around f8 to f16, and a lot's gonna depend on your situation and what you're in. I found that f13 has worked well for me for what I've been shooting, but what you're gonna need to do is take some sample images, and if they're too dark, well, then you need to open up to let more light in, and if they're too bright, you need to close down to cut back on the amount of light that you're letting in so that the fireworks show up much better. Now, for those thinking that you need to have an f4, sorry, an f1.4, an f2.8 lens, that doesn't matter here. When you're in the f8, f11, f16 range, every lens is going to do that. So you don't need the best of the best of the best glass with honors to try to shoot fireworks. Should I shoot on aperture priority or should I shoot on full auto? Neither. Manual is the way to go. You are gonna wanna set your manual exposure for this because the camera won't be able to determine what it should shoot the fireworks at because it's just happening way too quick and the meter is going to get way thrown off by the bright lights followed by the darkness. So manual is where you should be. So what shutter speed should I be using? Well, I like to use bulb mode. That's signified by a B in your camera and most cameras do have that today. So what is actually going on here? When you press the shutter button and you hold it down, as long as you're pressing your finger down on the shutter, the shutter stays open. As soon as you release it, boom, 
the shutter is going to close. So you are figuring out the exposure and how long it should stay open. My suggestion is anywhere from two and a half seconds to five, six seconds. You're going to have to feel it out to see what works best for you or to see if you want to track something that's bright going throughout the sky for longer or whether you just want to get the explosion at the end in the sky. If you're going for the explosion in the sky, wait for that mortar to, to launch and then press the shutter, hold it down, get the explosion, and then before anything else goes off, close it down. As in, take your finger off the button. I suggest investing in a cable release. Now, these don't have to be terribly too expensive. It's a cable that plugs into the camera and puts the shutter button right in your hand. So when you press it, you can control that bulb setting yourself. And what you're not doing is pressing down on the camera, which could give it some shake, which could then translate into your images. But as a little secret, all the images that you see on the post or in this video, I didn't actually have a cable release. I just pressed the button and held it there myself anticipation that's right you want to anticipate the explosions going off do you want to show the entire trajectory or do you just want to get that big explosion in the sky or do you want to have multiple fireworks going off well anticipate these things happen when that mortar shoots off press down the shutter button as soon as it explodes leave it open until it just starts to fade away and then you're gonna get that entire process that's going on. But this is a trial and error thing. You're gonna feel this out for yourself and just play around, but anticipate what is going on. Are there gonna be a lot of fireworks going off? Because at the very end, all the fireworks go off. Do you wanna get just a little bit of that or do you wanna get a lot of that? That's up to you. Turn off autofocus, because how do we focus on the fireworks? Well, one rule of thumb that people say is you could turn the lens to infinity, that's that sideways eight thing, and then pull back just a little bit, and then you should have everything in focus. One thing that I found works for me is when that first firework goes off, my camera's already set to manual on the lens and everything so that it's not autofocusing, and I'll look at the back of the screen, and I'll use the light in the sky to focus the lens, lock that in, and then I'm good to go with my manual focus. Composite in post. That's right, if you like using Photoshop and you wanna have one large scene with so many different fireworks going off, you could always composite those layers together in Photoshop. That's a good idea if you wanna show an entire cityscape with a lot of fireworks going off because there's so many of them that do go off. Bring a chair. Yes, it sounds simple, but you're going to be sitting on your ass for quite a while because you're going to own your spot. You want to make sure that you have something to sit on. So whether it's a pad on the ground or a chair, always bring a chair. Flashlight. You should have a flashlight. Why? Because it's going to be dark. What happens if you have to look for something in your bag or you drop something? How are you going to find it in the dark? Are you going to sit there with your cell phone trying to light it up? No. You need to have a flashlight so you can change the settings on your camera so that you can pick up something if you drop it or if you could shine it in somebody's eyes if they get in your way but have a flashlight if it's the summer bring water bring your own water so you don't have to pay 27 dollars for a little bottle of water it's going to be hot but have that water just so that you can drink it i know it sounds simple but bring some water bring some earplugs if you're sensitive to noise and loud sounds and explosions you may want to put some ear protection in to protect your ears don't just shoot the fireworks. Are there kids sitting around there? Could you imagine getting a shot of a kid looking up in awe at the fireworks and then getting the reflection of a firework in the kid's eyes? How amazing would that picture be? Sure, get those firework shots that you want to get, but if you're shooting multiple nights of fireworks, maybe focus on the families or the animals or the people at the park having a good time and try to get one of those reflections in the eyes of a child. Relax. Stay calm when you're shooting. If you're more nervous, you have a better chance of messing things up, so just stick with your gut. Understand what your settings and everything that should be that I've already mentioned, so that when it's time to go to work and get those firework shots, you're not freaking out trying to mess with your settings. Just change one thing at a time if you need to make changes, because you don't want to start changing multiple things and then screw yourself up when the fireworks are going off. And finally, remember, it's not like this only happens one time a year. Well, maybe it happens twice. So just enjoy it, have fun, learn from the experience, go out there and capture some amazing 
images. So there you guys have it. That's 16 tips. At least I hope it was 16 tips for how to get better fireworks images. Now go ahead, click up on the screen right now. That's going to take you over to the site so that you can read in more detail some more information about each one of these tips. But I also have some videos and sample images from past firework shows that I have shot. So there you have it. Have fun, be careful, stay safe, and capture some great fireworks images. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.